In today's video, we're going to be walking you through this community built out of shipping containers. We're going to be walking through with the builder who's going to be taking us through his entire process and all of that information. At the end of this video, we're also going to be talking to the manager of the space that is being used for commercial purposes to talk us through his numbers and some other interesting details. So definitely stay with us. This community has six units, so six double story units. This is also the first residential container that we're going to be walking through together. Okay, so most of the time, we have we show you what's inside but we don't actually walk through but today we're actually walking through a residential unit if you're interested in the other container videos that we have covered I will link the playlist to that up here up here copy <laughs> I'll link it up here in the card so that you can click and check out our other videos so let's just check it out we're here with Eric Jima who built this lovely project behind us with the owner so he's going to be talking us through his build process and all of those little things in between. Hi, Eric. Hello. Hi, Mommy. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. So you've got this very unique, different thing behind us and we just want to get into your head a bit and learn some more about the work that you've done. Okay, uh, all right. Talk us through the experience building this project. What was that like for you? It was exciting. <laughs> let, me just, okay. let me just use um, um, the very simple word. It's, it's, it was a new project. The terrain was quite new. As you can see, the mountain is very steep. How the containers even moved from downhill, <laughs> uphill alone yeah. was a whole adventure. And um, it was exciting, like, like, like I said. That's, that's it was, the yeah. word to summarize it. So talk us through working on this topography because the land is very mm -hmm. slopey. And then the hill gets in here. It's also a joke. Okay. That's steep. <laughs> okay. Tell me how you got your tracks up here with the container and all of that. Okay, so apparently it wasn't the tracks. The, the tracks okay. couldn't uh, come uphill here okay. with a container. So we actually dragged the containers with a bulldozer. Whoa. Yeah, on the ground, on the ground. We dragged all these containers on the wow. ground with two bulldozers. Okay. We got one bulldozer could not even climb up the hill with the containers. Oh, wow. So the containers were down the hill mm. and we dragged all of them. Uh, from on the ground wow. up here and then we also dragged the crane cars up here so the crane cars came to lift them and offload all of them over wow. here it wasn't it wasn't a joke it took us almost <laughs> about um almost about two weeks when it just getting up here yeah yeah just yeah, yeah. Whoa. the containers were stuck down there for uh, all of them were stuck down there we got the previous arrangement we made for them to get up here they didn't work mm -hmm. so we tried a couple of them till we finally decided on to use the bulldozer okay. to drag them here. So about almost about two weeks, the containers were stuck wow. down there, and then we wow. dragged all of them one, one, one up here. Up here, that's yeah. that's very interesting. Yeah. So in the two weeks, you were able to get all six up here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was, it's not actually six; it's twelve containers. Okay, because you have yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. So okay. each unit consists of two uh, two shipping containers, okay. twenty feeter container up and a 40 feeter container down. Okay. And the base, which is the foundation yeah, I'm sitting on, mm. which we are using as a kitchen uh, was built. So it's the kitchen, the 40 feeter, the 40 feeter is a um, one bedroom self-contained okay. with your hall and everything. Then the upstairs doesn't have a hall, but it's a bedroom with uh, your toilet and bath. And you also have a very big balcony to enjoy the view. The view, because it's all about the view. It's all about the view, yeah. It's beautiful here. Okay, but then tell me why you guys decided to go for concrete at the base. Is there a specific reason why you didn't do containers throughout? Okay, so basically, um, the reason why we did concrete was the nature of the land. Okay. The land wasn't um, flat, as okay. you can see. Even we worked on it, mm. we've actually worked on it a lot before we, you were able to have it like this. Okay. So the land was in such a way that at the top was, uh, was a bit high, Mm. and uh, the sloping is also very steep. Very steep. So to be able to position the containers in such a way that we wanted all the containers to be aligned, as you can right, see. We right. didn't want some of them to be down, no, some of them up, to be up. Okay. So basically the whole, like the conclusion was to create a foundation mm -hmm. based on the slope of the land because with the, where, with the bricks and mortar, we can actually work around the, um, uh, the slope to right. get a very uniform um, alignment. So that's why we decided to use um, the blocks for the base so that we can get that alignment and the containers will come and sit so that all of them will be on the same yeah. level. Oh, some sort. Thank you. Okay, so before we go inside, let's talk a bit about the 
the structure itself, the okay. exterior. Let's talk about the materials that you used over here. So we can see that you've cladded the container with the wood finish. Tell us why you decided to do that. Does it have anything to do with the area that we're in? We actually cladded this whole project because of three reasons. First of all, because of the beauty, to add beauty to mm -hmm. um, the whole container. Secondly, to also provide insulation, to provide the heat barrier, and also to provide uh, protection for the container against the rust okay. because the project is quite close, close to the, the sea, sea. Mm -hmm. so during the night the breeze uh, you know already has got a lot of salt in it so to break that barrier so that the breeze doesn't get direct contact with the container that's why you put the cladding that's... around it okay yeah so eric we see that you only have planters with a few plants inside is there a specific reason why you don't have a bit more greenery in the space like i said um, this place was a virgin land there was so little development when we started this project. And since it's a mountainous area, it has a lot of scorpions oh, and snakes okay. around. There was a lot of scorpions and snakes and when we were working and all that. So uh, the owner of the project and also per my advice, we decided to limit every plant in here okay. for now. So that as development and also we're doing a lot of fumigation to actually push them away and reduce the snakes and scorpions within this area, um, the, this area. Okay. then later so we actually made allocations for some few places that we'll be planting but we oh, decided okay. to cement the whole place when the time oh, is no. up we will dig in there and then we'll plant the trees okay yeah okay 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 so currently how are you taking care of that situation you spray the yeah, area we, we do we do we do a lot of fumigation like almost every month every month we do uh, uh two times okay. like we uh fumigate the place two times in a month and when we started even it was like once a week hey. yeah well, once a week That's because expensive. the whole place was quite filled well, with yeah, all these yeah, bush there was a lot of bushes around and all that so they were they were all around but as you can see people have, have started moved. developing mm. since this project came here there's a lot of development going yeah. around can we talk a few numbers can you tell us what it would cost us to get something like this without the concrete base just okay. the maybe one level, so your middle level that has your bedrooms and then your living area, yeah. kitchen area. Yeah. Tell us how much it would cost for something like that. Okay, so let's say you want to use a 40 feeter. Mm -hmm. You want to use a 40 feeter to get um, a bedroom that this one has got, a toilet and bath that this one has got, a living room that this one has got with a glass air condition. We are talking almost about um, 70,000 Ghana cities. Yeah. Right, Eric, so if you could kindly walk us through your building the building yeah so what what is the arrangement like over here okay so we have um two units like as you can see the very top unit which mm -hmm. is a which is a one bedroom apartment the second bedroom and the kitchen so let's go to the top unit okay and have a look at how the top the top unit consists mm -hmm. of a bedroom mm -hmm. um a toilet but it's actually an open concept oh so, so like the a whole, studio yes yeah, like okay, a studio so you let's go there have a look at it okay. so the top room has been separated from the middle unit okay because the middle unit connects to the kitchen downstairs okay so if you have a, a family or uh, somebody who is coming in the person wants to cook mm -hmm. um, and wants to have their own time there is a kitchen which is the downstairs so the downstairs is connected to the middle one okay but the top one has been separated mm -hmm. so that in case somebody wants to actually just take the down but doesn't want to take the top okay you you, you don't have that inconvenience okay. of um the person being up having access to okay um the room downstairs but if it's a family of two and you want to take a full two-bedroom apartment the whole unit is available right okay there's the um, top uh room or the top apartment okay. which is just like a um, one bedroom mm -hmm. studio with um, your toilet and bath behind you at the stream okay. back of the structure. Mm. So when you ask about the plumbing, this is one of the techniques we used when we were considering the plumbing works. Mm. We run all the plumbing through the back okay. of the structure. Mm. So all the bathrooms were sent to the back of the container so that we can easily run the pipe at the back okay. to the ground. Yeah, so that's it. But I think with the middle and then the kitchen floor, there are some kitchens and there are some waterworks somewhere on the side. On the side. So some of the pipes are running on the side to the ground. So there is the bathroom and toilet. There's your small wardrobe to okay. keep your 
your clothes. Then this you have your bed. your bed. There's a double bed. Since okay. it's a, a container, we wouldn't advise a king size bed because a king size bed will take almost the take the whole space. space. So there's a queen size that's good enough to accommodate two adults. And then you have your small sitting area mm. right over here. It's an open concept, so that's why we don't have any walls. And they also the walls also limit the spaces inside. Right. So that's why you have an open concept. You can come out and sit here. So the bed with the headboard there is mostly for privacy. For privacy. Because without that, there would be a creation of some illusion of space. Space, yes. I think, but right now it blocks it. It blocks okay, it. Okay, so if we had this unit, right, and yeah. then we wanted to, instead of this bed, fit a kitchen somewhere here, mm -hmm. right, and then maybe have a sofa bed that opens up into a bed, mm -hmm. so that this would be like a complete studio unit. Mm -hmm. That could work, oh, right? Work. Easily. How much would it cost us? Um, let me see. I wouldn't be able to give you an exact figure. So okay. let me just give you a, a rough figure because okay. the prices keep on changing, changing and all that. Mm. So for you to work on, let's say, a one-bedroom studio apartment in a 40 feet container. Let's do 20 foot first. You want to do 20 foot? Yeah. A 20 foot, is... I wouldn't advise for you to have a bedroom and a kitchen in there. Why? Um, there will be little room for ventilation. Okay. Very, very little room for ventilation. So we won't, So even this room is a 30 feet. Okay. It's a, this is actually a 20 feet container. The 20 feet container ended here. Oh, okay. It ended here. So from the back to this side, it's a foreign container. And then from here, it's locally made. We oh. did a, We did an extension okay. for it. So if you just imagine having a 20 feet ending here, your bedroom, your bathroom, the kitchen coming in here. But if your land, where you are going to put up the structure is quite big. Mm -hmm. The kitchen can be incorporated to come just outside the container, but not inside the container. Okay. That's if it's on the ground. It's like it's, it's a it's a grounds where we can easily just create a kitchen extension okay. that will just easily connect from your bedroom to the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. So that can, can be done. Force a kitchen here and then force a little bed. No, it, it can be forced but in be, there, but it'll be tight. It'll be tight. Okay. You, you're going to cook there. Uh, if you have plans of cooking there, we will, we will not advise. No, but if you just want it for decoration, say just to <laughs> have some breakfast. Breakfast. Oh yeah, you can, you can, okay. you can, you can definitely have that. But it's not a kitchen that you can actually cook there. Then most of the food is going to come back to the room and all okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So with the extension with your ten additional ten. Yes. So for something like this, if we were building a studio unit a studio with the unit. kitchen and then the bed yeah. living area set up how mm -hmm. much how much would it cost oh let's uh we are looking around sixty thousand ghana cities 60, 000. yeah sixty thousand ghana cities will be able to give you a kitchen a bedroom a toilet and bath in a 20 feet container by mind you will be doing a little extension, extension. for okay, the kitchen to yeah. provide for the kitchen yes okay okay so that's about 30 feet for sixty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. so will this include a finished bathroom finished kitchen yes y yes all Is installed it, everything yeah, all installed, not just but you're not going to get a shell. condition okay you get fans, you get your lights, mm. and there's one thing that I don't know if you've taken notice here. Mm -hmm. We don't have fans in here. Yeah. The reason why we don't have fans in here, one, is because of the height. Okay. There's a 20 feeter. Most of the 20 feeter containers are low cubic. The low cubic containers are 7.5 feet. That's mm. the standard ones that the, um, the shipping lines use is the 40 for the 40 feet containers that you have the high cubic and low cubic right and most of the 40 feeters at least the high cubic is uh, is quite uh, available mm -hmm. so if you if you go to the room downstairs you realize that the height of the room is quite taller than this so when you are working with a 20 feet container we don't normally fix fan. if you're going to fix the fan it needs to be On the wall fan and secondly, the more reason why we didn't fix fans here is that in the mornings and evenings, you can't use the air conditioning, you can't use the fan. The wow. place becomes very cold. cold. Okay. The place becomes very, there's a lot of wind. So all you need is to open your windows or open your door. Ah. Set, and there's a lot of wind here okay. in the mornings and in the evenings. Your windows have allowed for some cross ventilation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The windows were built okay. for to to allow cross ventilation so the wind comes in and goes out but that's what i was wondering what you would put between because you're saying there's so there's no rock wool glass wool nothing between the the plasterboard and the metal doesn't that affect your heat insulation in some way no 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 it's actually we did a system called ceiling joints before we attach the plasterboard okay. the ceiling joint has allowed space there is a two inch space between the container and the plasterboard that you're seeing in here. Okay. So the plasterboard is not directly attached to the container. 
We did a ceiling joint which allows a two inch space between the container and the plasterboard. So this plasterboard you're seeing has got a two in, it has got empty spaces inside which retains the heat that the transmits from it. it yeah, okay. does it. Okay. Okay. And then for the floor, we, we see you've used tiles. tiles. So like I said, um, the shipping containers, when they come and you're able to have you're able to have a history of the, the what the container have done. If it has, if it's not a container that has mostly been used for chemical transportation and all that, you can easily work around the wood, probably even polish it and have a parquet or wooden floor, which is also very nice. But with this particular project, looking at the purpose of the project, especially being a commercial project, we wouldn't advise wood floor because okay. wood floor needs or requires so much maintenance. So we took out the wood floor and also we did tiling for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's check your balcony out and then we can head downstairs. Okay. I'll let you sure. open your door. So we've got very nice, it's very airy out here, very, very windy, breezy, it's nice. Yes. You can. Very nice view as well. You're enjoying it? Yes, I am. Yes, I do. There's a whole surprise to okay. Villa de Tuga. Uh, standing here, looking at the whole Kokrobite township, Having yeah. a look at the sea with the different shades, uh -huh. uh, it it's makes beautiful. at least it yeah. adds it adds so much beauty. Your shirt to the matches the sea. <laughs> that's a different <laughs> different shades of the sea. <laughs> so yeah. that's it. So this is the balcony that you enjoy when you are staying at the upper terrace. Right. And all the the middle terrace that you have a balcony, the downstairs wouldn't also enjoy a balcony as this. Mm. So. That's what you get to enjoy if you're staying at the upper terrace. At it's night, beautiful. in the morning, sitting here, having around five o'clock, looking Breakfast. at the sun set and also taking uh, some tea or something, yeah. it's just uh, heartwarming. It will look really nice early in the morning and then in the evening. In the evening, you love it. Really. And even now, it's, it's afternoon, but mm -hmm. the wind is very yeah. strong here. Even yeah. though the sun is up, the wind is strong here, and which gives it some balanced cool feeling. Vibe, cool yeah. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. It gives, yeah. So it's very, very interesting. Yeah. It's lovely. It's really lovely. The water, then you work. I don't know if that's supposed to be a hill. No, it's also <laughs> another mountain. It's not a yeah, mountain. Yeah, it's also another mountain. Yeah, from afar, it looks like just a hill, but when you get close, you see it's, a it's, it's, a, it's also a, a mountain. Okay. It was it's interesting. It's beautiful. You got a bit of greenery over here. You can see the township. It's lovely. Yes. When you finally plant those trees, this whole area will have more green. We'll have more greens. Yeah. Very lovely. Okay. So Eric, could you have used what else? Could you have used instead of this timber to clad this exterior? Okay. Um, there are so many other options that mm -hmm. you can use. You can use cement board, which is water resistant, um, also heat resistant, and and about. And we could also use TNG, the mm. plastic TNG. Okay. This is the wooden TNG. You can use the plastic TNG, but there's a catch to the plastic TNG. It's, it's, it sort of absorbs heat because it's okay. plastic, because of the plastic material in it, it sort of absorbs heat. Mm. Um, the wood rather repels the heat. So that's why we decided to use the wood. So looking at that option, that plastic TNG, cement board, or the wood. Okay. Does the 60,000 quote you just gave us, the 60,000 mm -hmm. cities, is that exclusive of the cladding? It includes the wood. The 60,000 is inclusive of it's the wooden includes, cladding? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, so what is your roofing system like? Okay. This is what we call secret roofing. Okay. Where you don't get to see the roofing sheet, but basically the roofing has been done in such a way that it is sloping to the side, okay. the side of the structure. It going to the back of the container because it's is kind of too close to the wall. Mm. So it's going to create, and the back of the wall is very narrow, as you can see. Yeah. So directing all this water to the back is going to create a whole mess and at, the back. at the back. So we direct all the water to the side. So it goes to the side yeah. and it runs I down. I see your drainage pipe. The drainage so the pipe. slope is this way. The and slope the is pipe this way. So it it's able to spread okay. all the water. I say. But if it's going to the back, the whole pressure is going to just one direction at the back. And it now needs to find its way to Somewhere. run down, yeah. Okay. Okay, now you've got your external units all on the first, your ACs and yes. everything. Yes, all, all the ACs, or everything is on the ground okay. floor over there. Okay. Right, let's check out the floor beneath us. The floor beneath, okay, sure, let's go. 
Derek, please talk us through um, attaching the staircase to the building. Is it okay, uh, just a basic? That process? was um, that was quite simple. As you okay. can see, yeah. it's a metal staircase which has been cladded with wood. Okay. So we only built the the metallic staircase and attached it to the main building. metallic frame, and the ground was also attached to the foundation. Okay. So at least it's very firm. It's attached to the container. It's attached to the foundation. Very firm. And then we cladded it with, with wood to give it some uniformity with the whole structure mm -hmm. itself. Right, right. Did you treat this wood though? Yes, all the wood is treated. Okay. To be able to withstand the outdoor uh, atmosphere, it's always, we treated all of it. You've got some astroturf. Yeah. And then... At least to give it some... Some greens. greenery. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Like okay. I said, we, 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 we couldn't plant a lot because yeah, of um, the scorpions, the scorpions and all. So we did, we actually uh, incorporated some artificial greens into the relaxing area because this place is the relaxing areas for the clients when they come. Going downstairs, we know they don't enjoy the view as much as, much as this side. So the people who are lodging into the, the middle apartments can walk into their own back on it so this sort of their own back on yeah. it to also enjoy the view so we're in the mid level we're yeah. on the mid level okay so talk us through this space i prefer this to the other one to the other one for a few you i don't, don't like, know you don't, you don't like think, my balcony <laughs> i love i love the balcony. well this place is quite big yes this, this is much bigger. bigger this is more spacious homey. Uh -huh. there's a kitchen downstairs there's a kitchen downstairs and then your wardrobe here is smaller so oh. it fits your space better and it's against versus you see the way copy the way it was okay. long in the other one fighting with the headboard i okay, didn't like that okay, okay. so i think i prefer this and maybe your sheets here are also Clean. nicer <laughs> so, okay yeah. so this is a one bedroom mm. apartment okay um that's your bed mm -hmm. it's also this place also an open concept as you can see so yeah. we didn't actually put in any walls to divide so your bathroom and your toilet is also on behind the you mm -hmm. and then you have your bed which has got a very long headrest just to provide some bit of privacy, privacy between the bathroom and here. And then you have your small, um, let me say, a station to put in your books or read when you come here and you want to find a small space to do your reading, to pray, to write. You can do that right over here. Okay. And then we have a living area. So cozy. With a 42 inch television. We also have a um, decoder system. All the wires, as you can see, they run through the system right. and go outside. Okay. And then you also have this view to enjoy when you are mm. watching your TV. This um, there's another yeah. view you will enjoy when you are oh, in this particular palo. So you sit here to enjoy your TV and also enjoy, enjoy the, view. the view as well. Yeah, also lets in a lot of natural light. Thank you. Yeah. As you can see. And then we also have the stairs, these wooden steps, as mm. you can see. It takes you to the kitchen. Let's go to the kitchen. Oh, let's check out. Before that, we see that over here too, you have cross ventilation. The windows at the back yes. allow that and then but then here you can't push out. So that you means push out. you mostly have to use an AC in this you, space. No, you there's a window here. Right. Okay. There is a window here. So that gets in this some window, air. It brings so. it brings a lot of More. air. Okay. It brings a lot of air here. Okay. All right. And all the windows as you can see also has the net. Netting. Mm. The netting in it. So at night you can actually open it to have more wind here and then no mosquitoes or insects okay. will be able to come in okay yeah so let's check out your downstairs so, area there's the downstairs which is the ground floor mm -hmm. it, it takes you to the kitchen as you can see it's a very uh, small kitchen mm -hmm. because of course the visitors over here don't need too much kitchen for any commercial just for your private use so mm -hmm. you've got your cabinet uh, storage um, to keep some few things and we also have some few things that we also keep for the client your fridge your electric gas stove your sink for your anything that you want to really do cook your love <laughs> which i like so much so the kitchen is also ready if you want to use it everything is in here okay oh your walls block the view yeah, so the walls block see. the view, so you can yeah. see a lot. Yeah, well, but that would have been a very kitchen. nice view for your kitchen. Cooking and seeing yeah. the view. But okay, but over here you have a view, so that's yeah, over it. here you have a view, so you can at least also enjoy mm. the view. But I want you to concentrate whilst cooking so that the food doesn't get burnt. So <laughs> when you're done, you can go upstairs can go and upstairs enjoy, and enjoy, food and enjoy the view. Okay, okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Eric, there are a couple of things that we'd like to know about this construction that you've done. Okay. Can you talk us through your drainage process? What was that like for you? 
as you can see, um, the whole container has been cladded with um, wood. Okay. Behind the wood that you are seeing is where all the air conditioning, most of the air conditioning pipes and the plumbing pipes are running through. Okay. And then it's been covered with the wood. Mm -hmm. If we're not going to use the wood to clad it, we, will, we would have definitely found another way to run it beneath um, the foundation of the uh, of the container okay. or normally it goes behind, behind the container but this particular project everything was um the plumbing pipes are around the container but it's been cladded with the with the wood so you don't get to see oh that's interesting okay so when you were so how did you stack it you use the crane yeah we use talk the crane. us through that process okay so like i said um we brought in the containers downhill uphill with a bulldozer we arranged all of them up here then and then we also dragged in the crane car, two crane cars. <laughs> they couldn't climb up. The road, the road you are seeing it's is terrible. way better now. No, it's and way it's better. Still terrible. Yeah, no, it's way better, way better now. Previously, when when uh, we come to start the work here, it was way, way rough. Like it was mm. a virgin place, so the place was a bit rough. So we dragged the crane cars, two crane cars, up uphill, and they did their work. Left one, left into. Uh, a point dropping it, the other one also taking it from a point because the place was very rocky, so they couldn't move freely all about. So we needed to station two of them at a point. So one brings it to a point, the other one lifts it to a point, and then we arrange all of them. It was, it was, it was, it was quite difficult, but I think we did the first unit first, mm. and that was the most difficult because that was right, that was that one was going, uh, let me say, to the extreme side of the land because you come in from here. Yeah. Yeah, so we did that, we did a second, and I think the rest, um, it went easy, <laughs> yes. So Eric, can you talk us through the insulation type you used on this project? Okay, so we actually provided two insulation types for this project. Mm -hmm. One is the exterior. The exterior, okay. as you can see, we used the wood. Mm -hmm. um, we, we used a combination of pine wood and um, local uh, wood. This one is Dinya. Okay. Dinya wood from Ghana, locally produced and here in Ghana. These are foreign wood, which is a pine wood. Normally, we use, you see them in these pallets, but, mm. uh, not, but it's not a the pallet. These are pine woods. So there are two types of insulation that we use outside. Oh, so the fin. Okay, I the see the finishing. difference. You can see, yeah. yeah. I can see Good. the difference. So, and then the interior, we use plasterboard okay. to, for the ceiling, the walls. We use plasterboard because plasterboard has been able to prove that it's able to retain heat with uh, most of the even the block uh, work, uh, wooden structures, container structures. Uh, plasterboard has always proven to have that quality to keep the interior room always uh, cool. We did a paint here, like you can see, just this normal paint work, but the wood, as you can see, is not normal paint, it's what we call wood stain. Okay. The woods have got their own paints that we use is we don't use normal paint for wood. But with the inside is the normal paint that we use for them. And the containers also as well were given anti-rust coating okay. before the whole cladding was done. So also protect in case there's mm. any um, space for the breeze to get, in, uh, to get in contact with the metal at least, it's going to protect it. Okay, talk us through treating the container itself. Before treating the container. Treating it itself, that process. Okay. To make it safe for habitation. Okay, sure. So, the shipping container itself, you know, basically they are meant for industrial use. When you are buying them, uh, that is where you need to be careful, depending on what you are going to use it for. Some of them have been used over time to be able uh, to transport chemicals. So when you are buying those types in particular, it is not too good to use it straight away for residential purposes like this. Where you normally have to treat is the wood that they have on the base of the container. You need to change all of them. So this one, as you can see, we changed all of them and we tiled it. With the metal, it was okay. Well, all we did was to provide an anti anti rust anti system for it, and then we did a coating, and that's it. Okay. Now, for this side of town, I know that there are some earthquake prone zones. I don't know if this particular mm -hmm. side is one of those, but what did you do to this to make it a bit more earthquake resistant? Talking about earthquakes or let me say air tremors, um, it's not quite common around here. Okay. It's not quite common around here. But notwithstanding that, as you can see, 
the foundation was very, was was built on very solid concrete and is very firm to um, the ground. And then we also attached the containers. We provided a lock, a metal lock system for the containers. So all the containers that you see, the first container sitting on the foundation is actually locked oh. to the foundation. Oh, the second okay. container you see is also locked to this foundation. So unless this foundation comes off, this particular container ah, cannot fall. Right. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's not just sitting on it. It's actually locked in a way that the foundation is holding everything together. Okay. How long did the entire community take and then how long did it take to build each individual project? We did everything at a go. Okay. All the, 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 the whole project was done simultaneously. So okay. Okay. we worked on all and it took us one year. Oh, it was okay. even, it would have been, it would have been less, but there was a bit of um, some delays. Right. Especially getting logistics mm. up the hill was, uh, was glass. There was a time that uh, a whole a car that was bringing in our glass fabrication somersaulted on a hill. Whoa. Yes. So we went through some few challenges <laughs> and that, that, that delayed us, but it took us one year. Okay. One, 12 months to finish this whole project. Okay. Yes. But on, on a regular day with regular land, how quickly do you build a one bedroom unit? A uh, one bedroom unit with a shipping container takes six weeks. Nice. Yeah, it takes six weeks and we are done. Wow. Yes. Okay. And this was a very long span for you. So it's a long time. Yeah, there was, like I said, um, challenges. There were, there, were, there were so many challenges that came. And then we're also doing a lot of research whilst we were working. There were, there were things that we, we actually did um, wait to see the results right. before we move on. So it wasn't like everything was just there and we're there because <laughs> as we were moving on, we realized that we also needed to make some adjustment and also be sure some of the things we we're doing. Okay. In terms of um, the wind, the wind was one big factor. Working around the, from six o'clock in the evening going, the wind is very strong here. It's very, very strong. So. As you can see, we placed the containers against it. Against it, and then we actually waited and tested the wind against the containers as to see how solid they will be on the foundation before we even continued right. with the work and all right. that. Yes. How long have these been here for? Two years. Two years. Yes. Oh, okay. Villa the two guys. Two years. Almost old. two years old. Nice. Yes. So that means it is standing the test of time. Yeah, it is. How it long? Is how long? What's the lifespan? of the container? Oh, the container has got a very long lifespan. I can't be specific. Some of the shipping containers they even use for shipping, some of them, if you check their uh, years of existence, some of them have been in existence for 20 years, 30 years before they discard them that people even go and buy to use it them for like their own residential and other projects. So if everything should go well, this project should, I, I can't be specific, but it should be able to last for, for a very, a very long, long time, time. yes. Okay. So Eric, tell us a bit about some of the challenges that you faced, excluding the transportation, of the transportation and stuff like that. What other challenges did you face working on this project with the material? Um, the challenges are not, are not new to us because you've been working with uh, shipping, so is there the general challenges that you you uh, you get to have when you're working with shipping containers okay um they are i wouldn't I, I wouldn't call them challenge because it's quite easier working on shipping containers than working with uh, bricks and mortar okay the only challenge we found we we, uh, we got when we we're working here is just the, the transportation the transportation and the place also being on a hill okay. not on a level land mm. which 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 only give us after we place the containers we, we actually didn't have any more challenge. And actually, so, a, a, a few, a few or one I could talk about is the wind. Right. Working over here from four o'clock or three o'clock uh, in the evening, it's quite dim because as you can see, the project is quite up. So mountains, carfuls going up there with the wind sometimes around three o'clock, four o'clock mm. against you is very dangerous. That was the major challenge apart from that. Um, logistics, which I've already spoken to you about getting materials here. Apart from that, um, everything went smooth, right? Okay. Everything went smooth. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then let's talk about the response of the people to this design. Let's talk about the people in the community and then the guests that you've had live here. Yeah. What has the perception and reception been like? The people in the community, I would say when we started, everybody was amazed. Mm. Uh, looking at we 
even they saw us when we were dragging the containers <laughs> yeah. down the hill with the bulldozers up. Everybody was wondering what we were up, what we were, and then later they saw the containers lined up. Still, um, even when we told people that we were using it for a hotel or, or a residential building, a lot of people didn't get the idea. Right. A lot of people kind of wondered how we were going to do it. But as time went on, that the project was, was uh, progressing st uh, steadily. Everybody saw it, and they were they they were amazed. I'm, I'm sure everybody that have been here when I, when we we're here, people would drive all the way just to have or just to confirm that a shipping container that we we're using to build yeah. uh, the project. And even till now, people still wonder how we use shipping containers to build it. So uh, uh, that uh, sort of surprising mm. feeling is still there every yeah. time you get. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, Eric, so thank you so much for your time. We'll leave your contact information in the description if anybody's interested That's nice. in working with you so they can reach out. So thank you so much. Thank you too, Mommy, for, for your time. Bye. Bye. We're with Chris Educhumisi, who was the project manager on this project and is currently the manager. Sure. So he's going to be talking us through a little bit of the rental aspect of this property. If you're interested in using container homes for rental purposes or for commercial purposes, this is a great person to speak to. So that's what we're going to be doing. So hi, Chris. Yeah, hi. Hi. Hi, mommy. Okay. Yeah. So can you please tell us a bit about what the perception of your residents have been, your guests that have come in, how have they responded to the product? Yeah, I would say it's, it's good. It's mm -hmm. been very good. Um, good in the sense that um, a lot of people never expected uh, containers to be built and um, used as rental purposes mm -hmm. or in a very, in a, should I say, as a hospitality industry type of accommodation. Yeah. So, um, and also it being on the hill, the, the location is also quite impressive. Mm -hmm. So, um, most of the people who come here are very curious to, <laughs> to know how it is and they, they, get, they get very surprised and they enjoy the, the place, the scenery mm. and all that. So I would say in a, in a, in a whole, it's, it's good. I mean, it's, been, it's been good. Even though we have our own um, one or two challenges, especially climbing up the hill is quite <laughs> uh, scary. And, yeah. and I think we have more to do, um, which is also on the drawing board. There's a lot more coming up. This is just a sample we are we, right. we, we've, we've displayed. Yeah. So you have future projects with yeah. a similar concept. Yeah, yeah, very, very huge and, and very ambitious projects coming up. Okay. This is just uh, should I say a sample? Right. Yeah. So this is your test. Yes, it's test a sample. Phase. Yeah, it's a sample. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So talk me through what the sound insulation in here is like. You have a lot of guests. I mean, people want privacy and yeah. all of that. So. Do you have any complaints when it comes to sound from this external, this is your commercial area, yeah. you have events out here. Yes. So what's that like on the inside? When it's noisy out here, do you have any complaints from your guests inside? Um, yes, but, uh, not too much. We don't have too much complaints. If you are in there, uh, because it's, it has this glass thing and mm. uh, it's, it's quite insulated, but not um, especially when we have events here, we, we try as much as possible to inform our guests. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of promos on, on social media and all that. So they know when to come if you don't want too much noise. But uh, we don't do too many events here, especially loud events, okay. because of the nature of our, our, our service. We are more to do like get away. Right. Get away in a very quiet place and serene within Greater Accra, not outside. So mm. we don't we don't do a lot of events. Our events are um, periodically not too. I mean, not too much. Mm. Uh, when we have events, they know, right. and we tell you that there's events here. You can't really we will disturb you a little mm. bit and all that. But we don't go full blown noise here. No, we don't. Mm. Yes. So in terms of demand, can you talk us through your? Occupation rate? Um, when it comes to demand, we, we look at it. Basically, people, people are weekend. The weekenders yeah. are here. Uh, we have a lot of weekend activities here. Um, during the week, you have a few business people who pass through. Yeah. And maybe they just have a business meeting, or maybe they are tired. They just want to hop in from Monday to, let's say, Wednesday or something. But the weekdays are a bit on the slow side. Yeah. But weekends are very active. The weekends, everybody's rushing here. On Friday going, people start calling. In fact, from Wednesday to Thursday, the whole place is already booked. Okay. 
Yeah, and so the, it's it's quite, I mean, jammed here on weekends. Yeah, but weekdays it's 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 chill. It's cool, like yeah. you can see yeah. today. But yeah. even though it's a weekday, you guys are having a party here today. You can imagine. So, I see them uh, setting up. Yeah, I, I think uh, people like the scenery because of yeah. the uh, for photography and videos mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, they they can't help it, but to come and have their parties here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's one of the reasons. But mm. when it comes to occupation rate, it's very high on weekend. Okay. Yeah, very high. Yes. So what what are your rates over here? Um, the rates are just like it's it's very affordable, very very mm. affordable. So it looks like people people want to be here, and we have two types of accommodation. I think they took you through it. Yeah. Um, we have the one that has a kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's a studio apartment with a kitchen and then, um, should I call it a mini hall mm -hmm. with your sofa, your TV, and I mean, um, the ACs and the bath and the tubs and all that. So um, that one has is more of a, of a high, high end type. And then you have the top, which is without a kitchen, a studio apartment without a kitchen. But <laughs> funnily enough, that's the popular demand because uh, even though, yeah, that is that is more to do. It's a budgeted type, mm. more of the low budget. But you will not believe it. It's 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 over over subscribed because <laughs> <laughs> people want to see the ocean, the yeah. the view. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we have that one that is more affordable. Okay. Uh, yes. So these are the 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 rates. If you want me, you want me to. Yeah, I want your numbers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so the ones that, um, that that ones that has the kitchen mm -hmm. normally goes for um, between 500, 450 cities based on demands. You know, in the hospitality industry, we don't have fixed prices. Yeah. It's based on demand. So the base, I'm showing you just the base rates. Mm -hmm. When there's no full occupancy, yeah. you are looking at between 500 to 450 cities, Ghana. Ghana cities, yes, that is per night. But when we take it up to, you are taking it um, on a on a on a long period, let's say weekly or monthly or something. We normally slash off twenty percent um, oh, wow. discount for you, for you to make it easier for you to stay around and all that. So and then the one the the budget type basically um, ranges from three seventy uh, to three fifty. That's the range. Okay. Uh -huh. So and also it's the same as the other one, based on demand. If the demand is high, we raise it a bit. Uh -huh. So that's that's what I'll say about that. Okay, that's interesting. Well, so what services do you offer here? Eric was telling me you have a washing, a laundry area somewhere down here. So yes. can you talk us through the services that? Yeah, you yeah, we do, we do, we do laundry. We have laundry um, services. We also have a bar area where it's like a, you have a restaurant. We serve both local and um, continental cuisines. Um, um, we, we have some few recreational activities here mm. uh, based on demand. Um, some of them, we, we, we have this table tennis. Mm. We, are, we are planning to add more to it. We are building a pool area. Currently, we, are, we have inflatable pool here where people mm. swim when they come. Based on demand, we just open it up for them. Uh, but we are building actual um, an infinity pool down there on the other next area and then um, I think um, we have um, a cinema yeah okay. an outside cinema here <laughs> and football um, you know for for the football craze people like myself mm. on weekends Friday to Sunday is active we we build a very huge projector for oh, okay. and music is also here if you want to dance <laughs> uh, we have a lot of candle piece Mm. When we fix it during the weekend, people come have their mini parties. So okay. you could even have about five or six parties going on at the same yeah. time here. Yes. So um, basically, they, but we don't want it to be too loud yeah. because it's a getaway. And so we still have guests. yes, 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 yes. But there's more in the pipeline. Like I told you, it's a sample. Okay. So we are looking at the market. Yeah. Yes. It's really interesting what you've been able to do with these containers. Yes. So you are talking about more. Can you tell us a bit? about the more that is coming up so that we'll have something to look forward to because we'll definitely be back if we have more so yes um this is um we have other projects that we are embarking on mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be too comfortable <laughs> divulging everything but okay. let me give you a, a tip you can tell me where we uh, go uh, yeah no yeah, yeah but um <laughs> for the viewers um we we actually even have a hotel that is coming up almost mm -hmm. like seven to nine story building hotel. Okay. Yeah, just around the vicinity. <laughs> what is it built out of? 
Uh, that is uh, brick and mortar, okay. so it's not a uh, container as it as this mm -hmm. one. And also, we will be building more of these ones around the same area. Okay. Yeah, so we are we are looking at extending mm -hmm. this one, and also to other regions. Okay. We are invading other regions, and um, I think I'll leave it there. That's, that's nice. <laughs> that's ambitious. Yeah, really very, nice very, 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 okay. yes. So thank yeah. you so much, Chris. Thank yes. you for your time and thank for you, sitting with us for a bit. You're right. welcome. Thank Bye. you too. Bye. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends and family that may find it interesting. And if you'd like to contact Eric, I'll leave his information in the description below so that you can reach out to him directly. So hopefully I see you in my next video. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and an amazing life. Bye.